Moving on to coronavirus now, the infection rate dropping slightly to 5.4% from 6% over the weekend, and the number of serious cases likewise beginning to plateau. But the decline in infections is not yet a full-on trend. Health ministry officials therefore still weighing imposing limitations on the size of family gatherings for the coming high holidays in September. Also, the scenes in Israel's ICUs still heartbreaking, with vaccine refusers continuing to take up the majority of beds in intensive care. Exasperated and exhausted healthcare workers, for their part, describing patients' horrible deathbed regrets. We see a big difference between the vaccinated and unvaccinated patients. These are patients that need uh, uh, help in their uh, uh, everyday uh, uh, life uh, um, uh, activities. There are patients that, uh, that they're usually 70 years old and, uh, and, and older. And uh, their disease is, is usually more stable. They come, they need the oxygen, they are uh, sick, but they do not deteriorate. We don't see the, the, the big falls that we see with the unvaccinated patients. So th this is really the big difference between the groups. Joining me with more is Director of the School of Public Health at Ben Gurion University and Interim Chair at the Association of Public Health Physicians, Professor Nadav Davidovich. Professor, thanks so much for being with us again. Now, we are now at the highest serious case number since the start of the fourth wave. How significant is that, and, and where do we stand right now? So, indeed, there is a wide community transmission, but if we look on the Ministry of Health dashboard, I think there are several uh, signs that can give us some optimism. First of all, uh, the percentage of those who are positive now come uh, stable. It's around uh, 5%. Uh, During uh, January, with uh, the widespread, uh, we were about uh, 9%. Uh, also, the R coefficient uh, was reduced from about 1.4 to below 1.2. And in general, we see that less uh, those who are vaccinated and uh, over 60, they are less uh, in severe uh, conditions. I think all of this, including the a rate of multiplication that was reduced. It was uh, for several weeks up to 10 days. Now it's uh, more. This is showing us that we are in the right uh, direction. Uh, this is, of course, because of the vaccination rates, especially the third dose. Even the first dose now, we after several months that people were not uh, going, now we have uh, several thousand of them every day. But vaccinations are not enough. There are other factors. We see the green pass. Uh, use of masks that is improving enforcement. Only with a multi-layer system, we can actually get uh, together in solidarity, entering the opening of schools and the high holidays. We are facing, you know, uh, big challenges, but um, much more positive now that we can escape uh, lockdown. All right, so, so that actually brings me to my next question. I know that you are uh, against another lockdown but do you see us heading that direction at this point anyway? As I mentioned before, we have uh, the COVID czar, uh, Nachman Ash, he's, he's talking about potential limitations on the sizes of gatherings for, you know, probably limited to the nuclear family if I, if I were to venture a guest for the coming high holidays. Do you see these as, as being necessary? I think that uh, all of us already know and we need to be smart, you know. Uh, I canceled uh, two flights abroad that were not uh, necessary, could do it finally online. Uh, also with family gathering in the high holidays, uh, probably it would be better not to have large uh, family uh, gatherings and also preparing for prayers. And again, prayers are an important factor. Um, this is also things that we don't need to wait for the government. We can be smart enough uh, to prepare. Uh, and I think that uh, having some limitation would be advisable, but not going into lockdown, especially not things like not going over 100 meters or 500 meters, not going to the parks, not going to the sea. Uh, all of this and keeping the country as open as possible would be a, an option if we continue with uh, the current sense of urgency that was not there until a few weeks uh, ago. All right, now I, I want to come back to the ICUs because Israeli intensive care units are increasingly filling up with unvaccinated patients in terms of the, the serious uh, symptoms. 
have you have you personally had any any experience with with some of the so-called regretful patients, those who those who uh, are are now admitting to their nursing staff that that they really do regret not having gotten vaccinated? Yes, actually, we're even sometimes trying uh, to get to them, and, and sometimes they get to us uh, acting as ambassadors, uh, regretting about uh, their choice not to be vaccinated. Uh, sometimes people are dying, so then, unfortunately, of course, uh, they're not with us anymore, and sometimes their families are going uh, out. Uh, I think there is a change now in... Uh, you know the atmosphere, and uh, if you go out to this to the city squares, you see something that very different. Unfortunately, between April and July, we lost lots of time. There was no the sense of urgency. People felt that uh, COVID is over. COVID won't be over. We need to learn with it, not in a sense that we need to be passive. We need to be very active, and also learn from COVID to other diseases that uh, things can be prevented. And if we are going to invest in the healthcare system and also in public, other public, you know, uh, infrastructure like uh, welfare, community resilience. I think this is the main uh, message I'm taking for the future challenges. Uh, Professor Nadav Davidovich, thank you very, very much for joining us again. Thank you.